We have the Luna Vasahi Temple on my right, the Large Hadron Collider. What you are seeing is the prophetic fusion of art and science invented by the Indus Valley culture. That carving is on a ceiling, and in their land you will find many of these mysterious carvings that nobody can explain. That stone ball is a different stone. That is a stone chain. That's an iron pillar that hasn't rusted for 1600 years. That temple is carved out of the side of a mountain. That temple is the most detailed thing I've ever seen. I showed you how they encoded the acoustic knowledge into their stone pillars. But those pillars also have gear ratios, like a transmission, with perfect symmetry. Some of them even spin. There are even some you can play like a musical instrument. Their architecture resembles modern acoustic technology that has just recently been invented. The precision of their carvings rivals that of aerospace engineering. And instead of writing all this down, they encoded all of this knowledge about the physical world into their walls. We are still discovering secrets hidden in these temples to this day. Now, I don't know if their temples were particle accelerators, but there is a reason why there is a Shiva statue outside of CERN. My Indus friends in the East and the ones here in the States, happy Diwali, we appreciate the light. Maybe blowing from a gun is a form of execution characterized by tying the victim to the mouth of a cannon, which is then discharged, causing the person's gruesome death. This method has been documented as early as the 16th century and was employed as a means of execution until the 20th century. Portuguese colonialists utilized this method during the 16th and 17th centuries across their empire. The Mughal Empire also employed blowing from a gun as a form of execution throughout the 17th and into the 18th century, particularly targeting rebels. In the Indian subcontinent, the destruction of the body and scattering of the remains over a wide area served a religious purpose as it prevented Hindus and Muslims from performing the necessary funeral rites. This extended the punishment beyond death for believers as it denied them the proper rituals associated with their faith. I plead they believe they're rockets. This is how they claim they get into outer space, is these rockets. Their rockets never go straight up. Every single rocket launch from a government space agency, you'll notice, follows a parabolic curve. It goes up, it reaches a peak, but what they do is as the rocket starts coming back down, they make sure that it goes down over the ocean, out of the way of any curious observers. Anyone can see it coming back down to Earth asks, hey, how come the rocket's not going up anymore? Well, it's going around the curvature of the Earth, is what they tell us. So every single rocket, the reason that it follows the parabolic curve, they say, is because it's going around the curvature of the Earth. The, the real reason is they can't get up any higher than that. They tell us that the Earth is a sphere. They show us pictures of a sphere, of a circle. It's a perfect circle. And then they come out and they say, well, it's actually an oblate spheroid. What was that? Well, it's it's a sphere that's flattened at both poles, so it's more of an oval shape. It actually bulges out south of the equator, as well as being flattened at the poles. So it's more pear-shaped. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And it's just an oblate spheroid. That's what it's called. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than what the equator. Little chubby. Little chubby. Yeah, chubby's a good word. It's like pear-shaped. So now it's pear-shaped. So why are all of these official uh, NASA photos and videos showing perfect spheres when it's actually an oblate spheroid or a pear-shaped spheroid? They can't get their story straight. The reason they keep changing it is that to fit the model, they have to change the shape of the Earth. South of the equator is larger than north of the equator because lines of longitude they just extend outwards. They don't contract back. So they can see that in their pair model. They say, well, the sun it bulges out south of the equator, it's bigger south of the equator. Yeah, it is, because it's flat. But instead of admitting that, they just, you know, make
tweaks to their model as time goes on. They say that the baller tilts back 23.5 degrees. That's another tweak they made because we can see Polaris, which is right over the North Pole, from 23.5 degrees south latitude. Shouldn't be able to see that on a ball. So they just tilt the Earth back and then they, okay, now you can see it. And so they come up with explanations in reverse like this, damage control, reverse engineered explanations. Just dropped a trailer for a new album or song or whatever it is, and I'm telling you this is the definition of hidden in plain sight. Style Security Solution Do you ever feel alone? Feel like if you disappeared, no one would notice? Well, thankfully, it's time for a change. Welcome to 2093, where Lifestyle Corporation's state-of-the-art surveillance is your friend. That's right. No more worrying about vandalism or theft. We respond to any sign of crime immediately. Someone you love gone missing? Forget it. We track every footstep they make year-round. Perhaps you wonder if your employees are working while you're away. Our most advanced life cams are on every wall of your workplace, as well as our military-grade cloaking technology, so no one will ever know they're being watched. Let's face it, everyone. Privacy is a thing of the past. So sit back, relax, and know you are in good hands. Lifestyle is here for you, and we are always watching. I'm just saying. Land, California is likely to be closed from next week. It's incredible. Just last week, a family spent their day at Disneyland when something unbelievable happened that might lead to its closure. On Friday, October 13th, a family from Los Angeles visited Disneyland with their child. After about two hours when they wanted to have lunch, the child went to the restroom to wash their hands. When the child didn't return after three minutes, the parents went to check on them. They saw a man abducting the child into an underground tunnel that seemed to vanish beneath the floor. The parents could only watch as the ground folded in on itself. It was impossible to see that there, there was a tunnel hidden underneath. The parents rushed out and informed the security personnel. When the police arrived, they couldn't believe it. It seemed impossible for a tunnel to exist beneath the floor as there were no visible signs. Until now, nobody believes them and the child is still reported as missing. The parents had to visit a psychiatrist because they continued to insist on what they witnessed. There is currently a discussion about breaking the floor to investigate. Do you believe the parents are telling the truth and that something is hidden there? Get your ass in here and sit down. Disney got a lot of secrets. And one of their biggest secrets is them damn tunnels. And this dude found one. Roll the footage. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You tell me you going down there with just a glow stick, my boy? <sighs> this is supposed to come up on Tom Sawyer's Island in Frontierland, which in 1956, Walt Disney was said to have given it to the state of Missouri, and the governor of Missouri was supposed to have annexed it. However, the state of Missouri doesn't confirm that. So it's not, I'm not sure if we're coming up in California still. It's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to throw my glow stick ahead of me to make sure there's no sudden drops or anything. Okay. So 
were so good. Are those good? Just this Friday the 13th in October, some parents went to Disneyland in California, and when they went to lunch, they let their three-year-old child go to the bathroom to wash his own hands. And you guessed it, he didn't come back after a few minutes, so they went looking for him. How about they open the damn door to go in the bathroom and they see their child disappearing into the floor. They said the floor just caved in on itself. They called the police. Police came. You guessed it. They couldn't find the hole. So now they calling the parents crazy as hell. Now they got to see a psychiatrist. Because they don't lost their damn mind. Coast is highlighted. Okay, the East Coast is highlighted. The Illuminati. If you believe this stuff, I'm just passing on what what some people believe as far as Illuminati stuff. But they are projecting that this thing is going to pop off on the East Coast of America. Also, pay attention to where they're shipping all the immigrants right now. A lot of them are ended up in New York City and on the East Coast. Also, I was watching YouTube. Like I did. And I ran across this video of a fellow who was being arrested because he was underneath a truck stealing a catalytic converter. Usually nothing to see here, folks. I just thought I would see the how they caught him stealing the catalytic converter, but pay close attention to what he says as he's being arrested. I got a taser and I will use it. There's no maggots in it. So you want to know about Tesla and the earthquake? 
Oh, that's good. That's real good. All right, listen to this. Nikola Tesla's earthquake machine. Oh. In 1896, Tesla was working on oscillators to be used for energy transfer. The idea was to create an oscillator able to create various frequencies. In 1897, the device was ready and in 1898, he supposedly managed to oscillate his laboratory at 48 Houston Street, New York, enough that it alarmed the neighbors and they called the police. Tesla's electromechanical oscillator is a steam-powered electric generator. This is a blueprint of that same device. And this is the mechanical oscillator designed by Nikola Tesla, which is being held in the Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade. If this is Let's hop into this video, man, without further ado. Look, don't skip through anything because, look, I line these things up. You will get lost in the sauce if you skip around. But look, let's get it. I'm about to show y'all what's in the middle of the flat earth. This information is coming from the Book of Enoch. Let's see what the Book of Enoch says about the middle of the earth. This is the Repus Negra. The middle of the earth is described exactly like this in the book of Enoch. 1 Enoch chapter 26 says, And I went from thence to the middle of the earth. Verse 2, And there I saw a holy mountain. Verse 2, Underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream and it flowed towards the south. Verse 3, and I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep and narrow ravine, and it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. Verse 4, And to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former, and of small elevation, in a ravine deep and dry between them. Verse four, and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. Verse five, and all the ravines were deep and narrow, being formed of hard rock and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks and I marveled at the ravine. Yeah, I marveled very much. This is an illustration of what Enoch possibly could have seen in the middle of the earth. And I believe that the North Star sits above this mountain. We got the book of Enoch, chapter 17, verses 2 and 3. And they brought me to a place of darkness, into a mountain, the point of whose summit reached heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasures of the stars. So here is a wind tracker on Google Earth. This video is going to show you what the wind patterns look like in the North Pole. This is the North Pole. Why is it making this pattern? So on the flat earth, there is only a magnetic north. There is no such thing as a magnetic south pole. No matter what, a compass will always point to the center. Our magnetic field is a Taurus field. This is an example of our Taurus field.
This is a Taurus field. This is our magnetic field. This is how the Taurus field works on the flat earth. Again, there is no opposing pole at the edge. The entire flat earth is diamagnetic. Everything is electromagnetic. So we have a magnetic north pole and we have the sun and the moon creating our electromagnetic field. And this is how we get hurricanes and water currents. We live under an electromagnetic dome battery. de corrupção, políticos e empresários a serem detidos. Uma crise fez com que António Costa se demitisse. Apresentei a minha demissão a sua excelência, o senhor presidente da República. Isto é o que se está a passar em Portugal. Mas o que é que realmente está a acontecer? Isso é o que principalmente do governo que estava dividido. Por um lado, os partidos políticos, políticos como o PSD, o Bloco de Esquerda e os Verdes, criticaram o processo que estava a ser realizado e que era pouco transparente, enquanto que o governo, que incluía na altura o ministro do Ambiente João Pedro Matos Fernandes e o secretário do Estado de Junho e do Ambiente João Galamba, defendiam com unhas e dentes que este projeto era super, super importante para a transição energética. Assim como o então presidente da Câmara de Montalegre, Orlando Alves, que também dizia que era completamente possível equilibrar o desenvolvimento económico e a preservação do meio ambiente. E estes três meninos que eu aqui falo... Alguém disse que quem começou a correr para Agora entendo porque Olha, as pessoas vêm para tá cá. Está bem. <risos> Cãozinho. Lisboa agora? Aqui em Braga e em Portugal inteiro, você consegue ver um problema Sanatórios. que está estampado na ah. cara de todos. A e que abandono. também favorece o aumento aí do custo de vida. As casas abandonadas. Yeah. Casas simples, robustas, mal localizadas, bem localizadas no país inteiro. Caralho, isto é incrível, foi só um full palácio esta merda, mano. O problema é gigante. Caralho. Existem mais de 730 mil casas abandonadas em Portugal. Portugal é o segundo maior país da Europa em... Quantas casas? 30 mil... Existem mais de 730 mil casas abandonadas. Se 730... Mano, isto é estúpido, bro. 730 mil casas abandonadas em Portugal, caralho. Isso é, mais... bro, isso é quase tipo um décimo da população, caralho. Aliás, não. É, acaba quase... Aliás, é quase sim, pai. Tipo, mais de... ...em Portugal. Portugal é o segundo maior país da Europa em número de casas abandonadas. Perdendo só para a Espanha, cara. Isso caralho. acontece porque entre os anos 1986 700. a 2007 se construíram mais de 80 mil casas aqui em Portugal. Isso é mais ou menos uma casa a cada cinco minutos. E também o proprietário das casas Nossa. não tem obrigatoriedade nenhuma de dar uso a elas. O problema, chato, é que eu vejo tantas casas abandonadas, no entanto, aqui em Aveiro eu vejo cada vez mais casas a serem construídas. Ou seja, há uma, 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 uma discrepância, man. É tipo, casas a ser construídas e casas abandonadas. Há mais construção, sendo que nós já temos casas... A não ser que a construção seja feita no sítio das casas abandonadas. Mas não, é que tudo o que eu vejo é em terrenos livres já, man. Tô já. Então sai totalmente de graça para ele deixar as casas assim nesse estado. O que é muito contraditório com o país que os preços dos aluguéis estão aumentando. A casa, do estado. A casa é do estado, sim, sim, sim. E as empresas que constroem são empresas privadas, nem né? as casas são do estado. É verdade. É totalmente controverso esse número de casas abandonadas em um país onde os aluguéis são tão é caros. Duro, yeah. Em Porto, onde eu moro, existem Sim, muitas casas abandonadas, mesmo no centro. Não, Não só abandonadas, mas destruídas. Certo.